Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God is good. Amen. Amen. He is faithful. He's faithful, Brother Brian. Amen. He's faithful. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. I ask uh, Sister Tracy if she, you feel like coming up here and receive the offering this morning. Thank the Lord. We thank you for your giving and you are what makes this church be able to run and keep its doors open and you, pay the lights and the gas and the water and everything, everything that we pay at home. Thank you so much for your giving. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Make it so, Lord. Seal it in, Lord. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. I'm going to do my best to obey the Holy Ghost this morning. And I wonder if you will stay alert enough to hear God's word for a few minutes and, and pray for me this morning. How many will be praying for me this morning? There's a couple of slides I wanted to show you. One is on the screen. We're going to be talking about the wilderness and wilderness babies. And, and the wilderness when the children of Israel were in the wilderness for can you imagine being in a place like that for 40 years? No, no buildings. I don't even see any trees, do you? This is the actual wilderness that they were in. And if you can go to the next slide, Drew. And this shows how they were camped out and all they had, you know, were, were tents. And can, can you imagine the, the scripture said that there was, as the children of Israel were, being led by God that during the daytime, he led them with a pillar of cloud and then at night by a pillar of fire. Can you imagine the miracle of seeing that and how in awe that you would be to be able to see the fire that you're seeing up there on the screen right now, you know, um, uh, going up into the heavens, you know, from the from the tabernacle and and all these people look at their tents they are all around it, you know, and everyone can see it. It's almost like their doors are open towards the light. You see that? You know, I, I always want my heart to be open towards the light, don't you? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Towards the light of Jesus Christ, whether it's in the daytime or at night, Brother Brian. But I wanted you to see how to realize how I mean, we, we talk about it a lot and we, we preach about the wilderness and children of Israel being in the wilderness. But actually imagine yourself being there where there there's no plants. There's no water. You know, there's nothing there. But sand, you know, and, and 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 dunes and you know and mountains, but it's just nothing but the sun beating down on you constantly, you know. And and uh, Moses was he was chosen by the hand of God to lead uh, God's people out of Egypt. And the Bible says that the it, the Egyptians made the children of Israel serve them with rigor and with force. I mean, they didn't let up on them. You know, and and but God brought them out. Hallelujah. And God delivered them. The Bible said through his mighty hand and his outstretched arm. Do you remember when he reached down for you, Brother Brian? You know, and he reached way down. Thank the Lord. I thank the Lord for that. I thank God that he brought us out of Egypt and deliver us by a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. 
And let me tell you why that you are here today. You are here this morning because of the mercy of God. We serve a merciful God. Amen. You're here today because God showed mercy in your life. Hallelujah. You know, think about where you were before you got saved and how that, you know, he had mercy on you to send someone to you, to send his word to you, to open your ears, to hear the word, to even hear and hear the, and believe the word of God. And we're here today because God called you out of a world of darkness into his marvelous light. See that light up there? That had to have been incredible. You know, to see that pillar of fire, that light, you know, and, and uh, so, some of us might be on a on a bar stool. We might be addicted to drugs like family members. Uh, we could be, you know, still out on the streets. But praise God, you were saved by the mercy of God. Hallelujah. This morning, you wouldn't be here if it were not for the mighty hand of God and his outstretched arms. And can I tell you this morning that it's it's by the mercies of God. But you're here also because God sent someone in your life, uh, a preacher, a, a family member, someone, you know, to stand and declare, thus saith the word of God. You have to repent in order to be saved. You must be baptized, you know, for the remission of sins, you know, and you shall receive salvation. How many here is saved? Are you happy that you're saved? Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Praise the Lord. So they come to the wilderness, and while they're there, out in the wilderness, 40 years. How many children in you, how many generations are usually born in 40 years? At least two, right? Uh. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> But there were children that were grown, growing up, that grew, were born and grew up in the wilderness. And, and these children that were in the wilderness, that were born there, all they ever heard was the murmuring and the complaining of the children of Israel. All they ever heard was how evil the Egyptians were and how hard that they made them work and how that they abused them. All these children heard were all of the ugliness that was going on and that they're holding us captive, you know, in the children of Israel. And you cannot listen to complaining to all of that without it affecting who you are. Yes. Amen? Yes. You know, it's hard yes. to listen to something and it not get inside you and you start thinking that way as well. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. They only heard the stories of the taskmaster. They only heard the stories of beatings and abuse and how they were had to work so hard and how horrible that it was. But thank God today that here in this house, there are some people that broke free from that. Amen. That broke free from that bondage of sin and that bondage of, of the world and the stories. Even that we have heard, you know, they that that's all that they heard. You know, they were we were saved. Thank God we were saved from the bondage of sin. You can hear stories about maybe, you know, if your parents or your grandparents were believers, you can hear stories about how that they got saved, how that, you know, they were before they got saved and what a difference that God made in their life. You know, I hope that you all are telling your family that. Your testimony, how you were before and what a difference he has made. How, how he puts peace inside you when we're surrounded by no peace. Yes. Right? right? That somehow God is in control and he's going to work this out too. Yes. Amen. How many knows nothing is too difficult for our God? Yes. Yes. Nothing is too difficult for him. Yes. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. But I wanted to preach to you this morning that what the wilderness was to Israel the world is to us today it's like we're in a wilderness do you see what I'm saying there I mean there's there there's very little in this world that this world has to offer us that that you know is a like is even close to the blessings of God you know 
close to the blessings of God. And and uh, uh, but today we are on a journey, aren't we? Amen. We're on a journey, you know, um, as you read about Exodus and it talks about how that they held them captive and the bonds of Egypt. You, you read about stories about how bad that it was. Can you thank God that he delivered you from this wilderness? that we're in right now that he delivered us from it you know and and that you know he gave you peace enough to be able to get up in the morning even when you don't feel like it's just Tracy and come to God's house you know and worship him you know and lift up your hands you're able to lift up your hands thank the Lord you're able to stand up you know and, and praise the Lord and give him some glory in his house you know you have been set free from Egypt Amen. You've been set free. You are truly blessed by God. You are blessed by God. But I want to preach to you this morning that what the wilderness was to Israel, the world is to us. And we are on a journey. Listen to me this morning. Don't ever lose sight in this journey that you're on. That you get caught up in the wilderness life. You know, uh, don't ever lose sight of the goal that you have in mind. And that is to hear him say what? Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Hallelujah. Can you imagine God just going down the road, one person after the other? Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Well done, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Well done, well done, well done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's going to be an exciting day. Hallelujah. When the master reaches out to you, you get to touch his hand. Hallelujah. He lays his hands on you. Hallelujah. And you feel the true we think we have felt the glory of God before, but oh, hallelujah. When, uh, can you just imagine that? Give you chills. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> We're on a journey because the Bible tells us greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. We may be walking in this wilderness. We may be on this journey, but I'm going to tell you today, there are people in this room that can stand up in their prayer. And, and, and you know what? And can sing out, take this whole world, but give me Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Take this whole world, but give me Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah, hallelujah. Mm. Because with Jesus, nothing is. Because with Jesus, nothing is. Impossible, hallelujah. And when I've got Jesus and I've got the Holy Ghost, I've got Jesus by my side, I can take on anything the devil dishes out. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank the Lord. Hallelujah. But I'm afraid at times we are learning to have church instead of have a movement of God. Hallelujah. I don't want to be so dependent on talent to have church. Amen. You know, and people that can speak well and use eloquent words, you know, I, I, I want somebody in this wilderness to say, you know what? We did it before we had all of that. We can still have church. Praise the Lord. We can still glorify God. There's nothing on the walls. Praise the Lord. We're stood on the floors. We can still praise the Lord. Hallelujah. With nothing, it ain't nothing but an accordion and a tambourine. Hallelujah. My mother played the accordion. My dad played the guitar and anything with strings on it. My mom played the piano, but it was that accordion I remember the most. Yes. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We don't need church. We need a movement of God. We need a touch from the Lord. Praise the Lord. We don't need another song. We need an outpouring of the Holy Ghost raining down upon us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It, it troubles me when I don't see a tear in a service. Hallelujah. 
You know, that there isn't enough compassion there, that God's word isn't, isn't touching someone's heart so much that it brings tears to their eyes. God's word is supposed to do that. Because in the wilderness, I don't care how many places that you wake up, you ought to pray. In this wilderness that we're in, I'm talking about, you ought to pray. You ought to get down on your altar. Amen. You ought to kneel down and not let go until the tears begin to flow. <laughs> until we have received some compassion for this lost wilderness that we're in and all the many people that are there, that someone will survive and we will be delivered from this bondage. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Say, God, I'm not getting up until there are tears streaming down my face. Until I feel your glory, Lord. I'm not getting up until I feel deliverance in my body. Hallelujah. I'm not getting up until I feel something break inside of me. Hallelujah. Psalms 34 and 18 says, The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. I'm telling you, God needs people in this last hour that know how to cry and pray and intercede for the lost in our city, in our world, in our families. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. Joshua 24 and 14. Now, therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth. You have to have truth today, don't you? Amen. Glory to God. And you say, put away the gods which your father served and serve ye the Lord. Serve ye the Lord. And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose you this day who you will serve. Whether the gods of your fathers, which your fathers served, which were on the other side of the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Hallelujah. But as for me and my house, we are going to serve the Lord. Hallelujah. As for me and my house, we're going to make it out of this wilderness here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You need to have some determination inside of you that says, uh uh, not on my watch. As long as I'm alive, God's word is going to be out in my family. I'm going to pray. I'm going to intercede. I'm going to pray until my heart is breaking for my family to be saved. Hallelujah, hallelujah. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And as I was reading this in Exodus and, and a little bit in Genesis 2 about Moses, and I wonder what, I can't help but wonder what happened to Moses' sons. Gershom and Eleazar were their names. They were both born before they got out of the wilderness, before they got out of uh, Exodus, before they got out of away from the Egyptians. And I can't help but wonder this great man of God, this great man named Moses who impacted a nation and, and God's people. I can't help but wonder what happened with his two sons. Could it be that they were influenced? By the wilderness? Could it be that uh, the wilderness played a part in their life? Why didn't Gershom and Eleazar step into their father's footsteps alongside him? You know, they grew up out there, you know, and, and lead Israel to victory. 
Hallelujah to the promised land. It seems like neither of them took after their great father. You know, neither of them. And it started a family downward spiral in their family away from God and away from the things of God. I don't understand how why people that are raised in church decide to backslide and and take their children away from God. I don't understand that. I don't get that. You know, I don't understand how how that, you know, why not give them the same opportunity? Give your children the same opportunity that you had when you were growing up, you know, in the Lord. And and, uh, to me, that's selfish, just plain selfish. You know, your mom and your dad brought you to the house of God and taught you how to pray and taught you how to live for Jesus. You ought to give your your children the very same chance. Amen. The very same opportunity. So it, it started this downward spiral and something terribly wrong happened because the Bible said that Gershom's son, Jonathan, which would have been Moses' grandson, that Jonathan in Judges 18 acted as a priest when they set up those graven images. You know, he was a priest and he fell away from God and he began to be the high priest for idol worship. And as you read in Judges 18, it's almost like the Hebrew writer of Judges uh, didn't want anybody to know that Jonathan was Moses' grandson. You know, uh, because they even changed the name of Moses to Manasseh. You can read it there in Judges 18, it's Judges 18 and 30. And it was like they didn't want to even write down that Jonathan was Moses' grandson. But I want to tell you this morning, sin will take you further than you wanted to go and keep you longer than you wanted to stay. Don't be affected by the wilderness. Amen. Don't be affected by the wilderness. We got to get a backbone as believers. Amen. And stand up. We're, we're in a day and an hour that we've never faced before. And it's getting worse, you know. And people who know God better rise up and get close to him. You know, better be excited about being in God's house. You know, if you ever needed a preacher, if you ever needed someone to guide you and help you to feed you God's word. Hallelujah. It's today that we live in. That's why we have empty pews. The devil doesn't want people to hear the truth. But there's going to be a remnant that makes it out of this wilderness. Hallelujah. And he's going to say, well done to you who make it out. If you ever needed help building up your faith, it's today. Can I pastor for a minute? Don't wait until you make a decision. And then come to your pastor and say, you know what? I got a new job. What do you think about it? Or pastor, um, I'm dating this person. And what, what do you think about it? We're in love and we're thinking about getting married. What do you think about it? You know, hey, uh, pastor, I wanted to run this by you. I was thinking about taking a job, but it will mean that I'll have to work on Sundays. Oh, by the way, I already accepted the job. See what I'm saying? You got to realize that the devil doesn't want you to have a pastor who will preach you the truth and guide you so that you can stay close to God. He doesn't want you to have a pastor that will text you and call you Uh to encourage you. He doesn't want you to have that. So he will do everything he can to separate you. And lead you out in the wilderness. Yes. Put that other slide back on the first one of the wilderness. The enemy would like to separate you. Maybe the group is over here. And you're over here. Do you think you could get lost in this wilderness if you were separated from the people of God? 
See how the enemy likes to separate you? He, I mean, look at that vast wilderness. It's nothing but a desert. No, no greenery, no nothing there, you know. And the enemy, he wants his best to get you over here on the other side where you'll be lost. Amen. The devil wants you to work on Sunday so you get farther and farther away from God. Amen. Anybody believe that this morning? He does. Shout it. It's the truth. It's the truth. Amen. If you ever needed the voice of a shepherd in your life, it's this day that we're living in now. Amen. Bishop Harper is my shepherd. And I'm your shepherd. We will get lost in the wilderness if we don't have a guide showing us the way. You'll lose your way in the wilderness on your own. You need a shepherd. But you say, well, I can do this. I can get around. You know, well, maybe you can until the enemy trips you up and you fall and you break your leg on the rocks, on the rough places of life. Mm -hmm. And then you're trying. <laughs> you're trying to get along. And you're doing it, but it's harder. Right? How yeah. many knows the devil wants to do everything he can? To inhibit your walk with God. Yeah, yeah. Amen. He doesn't want you to make it. He doesn't want you to walk into heaven on your own free will. He's doing everything he can to, to cause you to give up your free will. Yeah. Amen. And live for him. Right. And get lost on the backside of the desert. Mm -hmm. mm. Hallelujah. They lost their way. By all rights, Eleazar and Gershom and their sons should have been involved with God and should have, but somewhere in the wilderness there, something happened. I'm here to encourage you this morning to tell you, you can make it even in the wilderness if you keep your eyes on Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank the Lord, thank the Lord. Amen. Thank the Lord, thank the Lord. I'm a product of this wilderness. You are products of this wilderness. Amen. It can be done. Amen. We can survive in this world that's called the wilderness. Hallelujah. If we have Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. We don't have to be. We're, we're here today. We're not on drugs strung out somewhere. We woke up this morning. We weren't under the influence. Right. Thank you. Hallelujah. I'd rather be under the influence of God. Yes. I'd rather be under the influence of the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Than anything this world has to offer. Yes. Glory to God. Yes. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And we're coming through the wilderness with you. Amen. We're on this journey together. Amen. Are we on this journey together, church? If you can have deliverance, so can the person next to you. So can the person that lives next door to you. Amen. We'll put it that way. You know, so, so can the next one. You know, we can, if we can make it, so can someone else. Praise the Lord. Somebody shout victory. I have the victory. Victory. And as I was thinking about these two boys, Gershom and Eleazar, I couldn't help but see that too often the family of the man of God doesn't see him as a man of God. Can you imagine Moses being your father? So many things from this man of wisdom, you know, that could that you could learn from him. And yet you don't see or read about his children being alongside him at all. You know, uh, asking, you know, him imparting, uh, uh, he passing the mantle, you know, none of that, you know. And, and on one side, you know, it, it's your dad. On the other side, there's the anointing of God that you can go to him and say, Daddy, I need some help. 
Amen. I need some help. I would love to see someone here today who refuses to be affected by the wilderness. Amen. God has a call on every one of your lives. Stand firm. Amen. Stand firm. Tell somebody, stand firm. Stand firm. firm. Hold on to the altar. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Young people are affected by the wilderness. By the wilderness. These children were raised in the wilderness. They heard uh, some murmuring and complaining, didn't they? You know, they heard it at church. They heard it at home. They heard it at the dinner table. You know, uh, I know we can all find plenty to complain about, but don't be distracted. Hallelujah. By what's going on in the wilderness. Don't be distracted by people that are not interested in making it through the journey. Hallelujah. I'm 60 years old. I've, I've been through a lot, but I'm, I'm so grateful that I had a mom and dad who took me to church. And, and I'm grateful that, you know, they taught me the ways of the Lord and it's still inside of me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can make it. You can make it. You can live uh, for God. Don't listen. To the naysayers. Don't listen to the complainers. Don't listen to the ones that say you can't make it. You can't do it. You know, I, I wish, you know, someone was as excited about living for God as I am this morning. Hallelujah. Growing up, I don't ever once remember hearing my mom or dad saying anything about our pastor. I never remember them saying, I don't agree with this or that Mm -hmm. or I think he's wrong I never remember my mom and dad saying that it wasn't until I actually began pastoring I think it was the first church that we pastored this is only the third one that we pastored the first church that we pastored uh, uh, I called my mom and I said did this stuff happen when we were growing up I said, because, I mean, I'm telling everybody, I've never seen people act like this before, you know? (laughs) And my mom said, oh, yeah, it happened. Mm -hmm. But they never let us hear about it. Right. Right. You know? If it came to their ears, it never came through their mouth. Mm -hmm. That complaining. Complaining will change a generation of of children. Yes. Yes. Complaining and murmuring. Hallelujah. Instead of, of bearing up and lifting up and standing by and, 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 you know, and exhorting one another as the word of God tells us to do. You know, there's plenty to complain about. I was telling Sister Wilson this morning on the way to church, I haven't heard one person in five years that we've been here complain about something that was going on in church. I haven't. Praise God. Yeah. Yes. Thank the Lord. Thank you. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Maybe Moses' men, his sons were, maybe they were standing there the day that he smote that rock. (laughs) Smote is, you you took out your anger on it. Hit and it's just, smote is, you know, put some anger and put some arm into it. He smote that rock. Instead of speaking to it. And it caused something to happen in their spirit. Of those children. I've been pastoring long enough to know that it doesn't take a whole lot for things to go wrong, does it? Does it? At all. And you're trying to keep peace. You know? We have to make up our mind to not allow any murmuring. Don't let the complaining affect you out in the wilderness if you're going to get out of it. Amen. Right. Amen. Scripture says, think on these things. It never said anything about the complaints right. and the gripes, did it? It said, think on these things. Whatsoever things are good, whatsoever things are just and pure and holy. Yes. Those things. <sighs> 
keep your mind stayed on Jesus. Keep your eyes on Jesus, the great shepherd. Amen. Hallelujah. The great shepherd. And I'm afraid these wilderness babies also got used to seeing miracles happen. Like I described as we began with the pillar of fire and the, and the cloud. And, and, and uh, uh, God brought them through the Red Sea and drowned Pharaoh's army behind them. He brought water out of the rock. He, he fed them with continual manna from heaven. You know, uh, the Bible said that their clothes did not and shoes did not fade or wear out in 40 years. Can you imagine having the same outfit? And shoes for 40 years. I don't think so. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Miracle after miracle after miracle. You're glad you don't have to wear yes. the same one. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, excuse me. It's one time or a whole bunch of times. So. <laughs> He brought water from a rock. He fed them with manna. Their shoes and clothes didn't wear out. We can't get so used to the blessings of God that it becomes commonplace and it doesn't, they don't affect us. They don't wow us anymore at how great our God is, you know, that he's just like somebody else, you know, that we're so used to it, you know, uh, um, um, that when the word of God is being preached, that we're just, we come to church and we're like, oh, it's just some more manna. You know, it's more manna, but God's word is like manna from heaven. It's like, it's nutrition, it's food. It's going to keep you alive. Hallelujah. It's going to bless you and, and strengthen you and beef you up, you know, and make you able to take on the enemies that you come to in the desert. There are snakes in the desert. <laughs> yes, there is. Amen. In the wilderness. I don't care how many times that you have heard Acts 2 and 38. It should make you want to shout every time that you hear it. I don't care how many times you hear John 3 and 16. That God's love the world. It should... Grab your heart every time that someone would give his life for yours. Someone who did no wrong. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Someone who knew no wrong. <clears throat> God is looking for some people that will say, come with me, Jesus. Walk with me through this wilderness. Walk with me, Lord. I want to keep talking to you, God. I want to hear your voice. I want to know your voice, Lord. That, that you know, look, there's a lot of tent. That means there's a lot of people out there in the wilderness, isn't there? I want to know the voice of the Lord. I want to hear the right one, hallelujah, that's leading me. I can imagine there, there could have been people, I mean, as there always is, you know, uh, uh, which way do we go? How, which way do we go? Well, I'm going this way. You guys, we done passed that rock. You know, we done passed that place. You know, we've been here before. I'm going to start out over here. And a whole bunch of people will follow them. And they'll start going that way. And then, you know, the other ones are going this way. I want to follow the voice of the Lord. Yeah. Not somebody that's going to lead me wrong. Hallelujah. And I'm going to get lost in this wilderness, you know. It's like a corn maze. You ever went on a corn maze and, and, and couldn't find your way through it? Worse than a corn maze. Keep moving. God is not interested. You know, we, God is looking for some people who will who will keep walking in the wilderness, will keep believing when there there doesn't seem to be no way. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord. You know that that uh, uh, someone that will keep walking in the wilderness and and keep walking by faith. Isn't that what we're supposed to do? Walk by faith, you know, and not by sight. Trusting in God, leaning on Him, hallelujah, in the wilderness. Church, we got to keep moving. God is not interested in a dry, dead church at all. He wants a movement. 
Amen. He wants to move it. He wants somebody that's got a burden. Hallelujah. He wants somebody that knows how to respond to his voice and and knows how to respond to the Holy Ghost. Joshua 24 and 13 says, and I have given you a land for which you did not labor and cities for which you did not build and you dwell in them in the vineyards and olive gardens, which you planted not. Do you know why we're here today? Because somebody paves the way in the wilderness. Yes. Hallelujah. For us to be here today. You know why? Somebody prepared the fatted calf. Hallelujah. You know, and, and church people had been praying for you before you ever came to this in the doors of this building. Yes. Thank the Lord. Joshua 24 and 15 said, And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose you this day who you will serve, whether the gods of your fathers served. Uh, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Praise the Lord. What we need is to make a choice. And God is telling you, I need for you to decide. Choose you this day who you're going to serve. God must have wanted you to hear this word this morning or he wouldn't have put it on your heart to push through the wilderness to be here this morning. Amen. Amen. Thank the Lord. I thank God. You know, Exodus. Listen to this. Exodus 15 and 20. And Mary, the prophetess, the sister of Aaron, took a timbrel in her hand, a tambourine in her hand. And it says, all the women went after her with timbrels. <laughs> Hallelujah! God is good! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! They were making some noise in the house. Hallelujah! In the wilderness, you know, and, and with dances. They were getting their moves on, you know. They were dancing. Hallelujah! You know, they they were just praising the Lord and giving God some glory. They weren't doing what everyone else was doing. It said they, they made some noise. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! There's not a whole lot of us here. Come up here, Sister Tracy. Come up here, Sister Carol. Come on, you can do this. God don't expect us to all be on the same seat. Okay. Think about what God has done for you. Mary was thinking about the deliverance that was taking place. Yes, and God was delivering them from their bondage. He delivered them from that. He delivered them from the punishment of being in the wilderness and set them free. You know, and can, can you just march across there? Them ladies were dancing. They were saying hallelujah. They were praising the Lord. They were giving God some glory. Hallelujah. You know, they were magnifying the Lord. They were setting the example. Thank God. Thank the Lord. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. God has kept you through a whole lot of wilderness. Amen. God has brought you through a whole lot of wilderness. And you can make your tambourine. That's a sound. Hallelujah. You can give God some glory for what He's done.
Hallelujah. He deserves our praise. If I can't yell loud enough, I'm going to get something in my hand. I want God to hear my praise. I want God to hear it. I want God to get the glory. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Mm. Anybody here that can still see what God has done for you? Oh, hallelujah. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. That, that walking by example and praising the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, in front of the people was, was an example for them. Hallelujah. It, it, it lets them see somebody's decided to live for God. There's movement in the church. Oh, hallelujah. You know, it's not just some old dead church, but people get out in the aisles. People are excited about the God they serve. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. It makes a difference when you go to a church if people are excited about their God than if they're just sitting there. Right? Anybody here can still see what God has done for your family. <laughs> Hallelujah. That God is doing. Anybody here still believing for your family? Hallelujah. God, I'm crying out for the Lord. Mm. Maybe we all need to buy us the tambourine. Anything. Woo! Make some noise. Thank the Lord, thank the Lord, thank the Lord. And as Sister Carol said, I'm still walking. I'm still walking, praise the Lord. You went through some stuff that should have broke your knees. Amen, that should have broke you and caused you to give up. You heard some murmuring and complaining, but no, you rose above it. Hallelujah. You put on those spiritual earmuffs and said, I'm only going to hear the voice of the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm going to turn up the volume on my Jesus. Hallelujah. So that's all that I hear. You know, and if there, you can hear them, I'm going to crank it up a little bit more and I'm going to make that noise get louder and louder and louder. Hallelujah. So I can round out that complaining. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. But no, you decided to remember that God is able. And God brought you through it all. And through it all, you've learned to trust in Jesus. You've learned to trust in God. Is there anybody here that God has been there for you and gave you strength? Hallelujah. And he still is today. Is he still giving you strength today? Yes, he is. You got a reason to dance. You got a reason to give God some praise. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. We're in the wilderness. But this is not our home. We're only passing through. Right? We're only passing through. We won't be here forever, Brother Ryan. Amen. I don't know when, but I know Jesus is coming back. Yes, he is. Amen. Amen. Oh, help us, Lord. Oh, and he's looking. Us His eyes are on to and fro, looking for one who will remain faithful. Yes. All the way through it, on this journey that we're on. Hallelujah. It's rough, it's tough. But with God, all things are possible. Yes, yes. We can make it. Amen. 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 We can make it. I want you to do something. I want you to call somebody up this week. You've got homework. Call someone up this week and tell them you can make it. Okay. And then tell them why you believe. Can you do that for me? Tell them you can make it. Tell them why you believe that. 
Well, I have made it. Let me tell you my story and what God did for me. Will you do that? Everybody here that will do that, raise your hand. Don't, don't raise your hand if you want. Okay. Somebody. God wouldn't have put it on my heart if there wasn't somebody out there that needed that this week, that it's imperative that they hear it this week. Okay? So don't forget, all right? All right. Hallelujah. I love y'all. God is good. God is faithful. Thank you. Thank you for your word. It's a good word today. Yes. Good word. This is the wilderness that we're in, but it's not our own. Amen. He set me free. Amen. He set me free. Glory to God. Glory to God. Let's stand and pray. Grab someone's hand as we pray. Hallelujah. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for your word today, God. Lord, I thank you for everyone that is in your house today, Lord Jesus, God. God, I pray, Lord, that you would just look at our spirits, Lord God, Lord, that church won't become common, Lord, but it will be excited to be in your house, God, to get close to you, Lord, to draw, you said, draw nigh unto me, and I will draw nigh unto you. Father God, I pray today, God, that your people will draw nigh unto you, God. Lord, that we will take the step to come to you, God, and you will come to us, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, I pray for Janice this morning, Lord, for her daughter, Lord. Lord, I pray for Kate and Bart, Lord, for Kyle and his wife, Lord. For all of our children, one by one, Lord Jesus, God, and their families, Lord. God, our neighbors, God, Lord, those around the church, Lord, God, I pray, Lord, that that pillar of fire, light, Lord, would shine from this church, God, would shine, Lord Jesus, God, wherever we are, Lord, we are your church, God, and wherever we are in this city, God, let that light shine, Lord Jesus, God. Lord, we glorify you, Lord, we magnify you, Lord. God, I speak healing, Lord, to those that need a touch from you, Lord, today, God. Lord, myself included, Sister Tracy, Lord. Lord, everyone, Lord Jesus, God, that needs your touch, God. Strengthen, Lord, strengthen our bodies, strengthen our minds, God. Lord, don't help us to not let the wilderness get inside of us, Lord, and affect who we are and cause us to get separated from the Father, God. Oh, we need you, Lord. You are a great shepherd, God. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, mighty God. Lord, I speak blessing and peace, Lord. And God, wherever we go this week, Lord, we are going to speak peace, Lord, in an in a unpeaceful world, Lord, in a troubled world, God. Oh, we love you. We praise you, Lord Jesus, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God, you are with us. Go with us, Lord. Seal your word in today, God. Lord, let it come alive every morning, every day, God. Let it come alive, God, that we can make it through this wilderness that we're in, God. It's only for a short time we're passing through. Heaven is our home. We're going to hear those words. Well done, God, good and faithful. We're determined, God, to hear those words. Well done. Thou good and faithful servant. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Help, Lord. Jesus.